Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna to try to recreate this using Illustrator and Photoshop. I haven't actually done anything quite like this before, but it looks fairly straightforward. We're just gonna kind of experiment around and see what we can do. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so let's analyze the structure really quickly. This is a number two right here, and it's kind of broken up into these different sections. If you look in this area, We've got going up from here and then it cuts off right here. You actually see that line right there. So we've got like a gradient type of fill that's going in this direction. And then when we go into this area, it starts right here. We've got that nice solid white area. So it's very easy to see that. And it's curving down this way. I'm not exactly sure where it technically stops, but it does stop here in this general area, probably around here somewhere. I would say the line is probably around there. And then we've got this third area right down here and it kind of starts in this white area and fades off into this area. So we've got really cool gradients and textures going on. So I'm gonna see how accurately I can recreate this. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is move this off to the side. And just like everything else, I'm just gonna assume this is Helvetica. So I'm just gonna use that. And let's go ahead and do Helvetica bold. I'm gonna create outlines. I'm just gonna make it a lot easier to work with. Let's go ahead and center it up onto the page. I'm gonna bring it all the way up. Let's give it a little bit of margin here. We've got exactly one inch margins on the top and bottom. So let's do the same thing on the sides. All right, so now we have exactly one inch of margin going around all four sides. All right, so we're gonna use our Pathfinder tool to cut up this number two. So I'm going to swap my fill and stroke. I'm gonna activate my pen tool. And now I'm just gonna draw a line right here in this section. And then we'll do one kind of roughly here. And we'll do one right here in this area. And I'm just guessing for this last one, but I'm gonna do it right here. All right, so we have these four lines right here. This is gonna be our cut points. So we're gonna select that too, along with all the lines. And let's go over here to Pathfinder and click on Divide. All right, and now we're gonna use our Direct Select tool and select this section and just hit Delete. And then the same thing with this section. And we have our number two that is segmented like this. All right, I'm going to select our two and I'm gonna color drop that white. And we're gonna change the background of this. I'm gonna see if it's gonna be best to do our coloring here in Illustrator or Photoshop. I'm gonna try Illustrator first. All right, so when we click on this, this is all still one unit. So what we need to do is ungroup everything. And I'm going to color drop on that background just to get it more color accurate. And we're gonna lock that background layer. Now I'm gonna go over here to my gradient panel. If you don't already have your gradient panel open, go up to window and click on gradient right there. So now I'm gonna click on this top one right here and we're gonna go over here to freeform gradient. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to work with. So we're gonna have these little circles right here and I'm going to select each one of those circles and make this white across this area. And you can click anywhere to add a color. So I'm going to go over here and we're gonna make this fade out completely. All three colors are gonna be black. And in fact, I'm gonna double click on each one of these colors and bring the colors down all the way to zero. All right, that first one is looking good. What we need to do here is unlock this layer real quick and bring this all the way down to 100% black, so that way we actually have that fade going on. And now we'll repeat that same process for each one of these pieces here. So we're gonna add some colors right here in this section. That's the great thing about this tool is that it's very easy to use. All you have to do is click where you want these colors to go. Now I'm not really doing three for any particular reason. I'm just making sure that we're covering all of the colors there. And what I'm doing here is going slightly beyond where the shape is, just to make sure that the black color right there is actually going into the areas where I want it to go. And it looks like we went a little bit too far. Let's go back into our edit mode right here and make sure that we get those still inside of that shape, but to where it's actually fading in that background there. And I just realized that these are reversed, so we have to reverse this. That kind of thing can happen sometimes, especially when you're really focused on something. I think what I'll do here is bring it to about right there. That's what's so cool about the freeform gradient tool is that you can just move it wherever you want to. All right, then we'll do the same thing with the last piece here. And let's get the colors right this time. We'll bring these all the way down. 
And one thing that I just realized is that we actually have to go in here and make these not 100% white because we're gonna be adding a texture to it. So let me go in and edit the gradient there. And I'm just gonna change the colors to 245. So we'll grab this hex value and then just paste that in every time we see that. I know I've talked about this in previous videos a lot, but if I didn't make it perfectly clear in this video, the reason why we changed it from 100% white to almost 100% white is because we're gonna be adding in textures once we take this over into Photoshop. And if it's 100% white or 100% black, you're not gonna see those textures at all. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what they're saying right here. I think it's poster jam, is that correct? And it looks like the date on that is 11. 0919 depending on where you are in the world that could be September 11th or it could be November 9th but I'm guessing from the format that it's probably somewhere in Europe I'm not exactly 100% sure but I'm just going to make that assumption so I got the baseline all the way at the bottom of this top part of the two and then all the way to the left side so I'm gonna move it and we're gonna move it by a quarter inch horizontally and negative quarter inch vertically and hit OK for the most part, the kerning looks good. So let's just make a few adjustments here just to make it a little bit more attractive. That J and that A definitely need some love right there. It's a lot of space in between those ones. So let's bring that in, make it nice and tight. All right, that's looking good right there. And let's see what else we've got. We've got the word two with quotes around it. That definitely doesn't look like Helvetica. I'm not sure what font that is but I'm just going to say it's Helvetica. Go all the way up to 90 point here, and we'll not add a second T in there. Let's go ahead and adjust the kerning. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's bring the top of the glyph right there up to the top of this. I'm gonna draw just a temporary rectangle right here. Doesn't matter what it looks like because we're gonna remove it in a second. I just want to use it to center that type. So we're going to select both the shape and the type, click on the shape to set a key object, and then align it to the center. All right, and now we can click on this and delete that box. And now just like we did earlier, we're going to move it down vertically by a quarter of an inch. And I'm not sure what this is right here. This looks like some kind of a symbol or a logo. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but maybe I will put something else there instead. This looks like it could be for a poster exposition or something like that. So I'll just put poster exhibit. And let's kern up these letters a little bit. We've got a lot of spacing in between the letters here and the word exhibit. And let's put a Roman numeral two down here just to make it tie in a little bit more with the number two up there. All right, so I have this adhering up here in the top left corner. And so we're gonna push it over by a quarter of an inch and push it down by a quarter of an inch. All right, that's looking really cool. And now let's select all three of these and I'm gonna bring this up to about 10%, just a little bit. All right, we're gonna select everything right here. We're gonna make sure that our background layer is locked so we don't pick up on that. I'm gonna hit copy. Then I'm gonna create a new document in Photoshop. It's gonna be 18 by 24 with a full resolution of 300. And we're gonna paste it as a smart object and hit okay. And I'm gonna add a background color adjustment layer here. And in this case, the background color can be 100% because we're only gonna see that texture in the areas where we see the artwork. All right, let's create this texture completely in Photoshop. So we're gonna add a layer and I'm gonna call this grain. And we're gonna fill it with 50% gray and hit okay. And now we'll go up here to filter and camera raw filter. And it's a pretty heavy amount of grain. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up to 100 and the size and the roughness up to 100 as well. We're gonna hit okay. And so there is our texture and I'll zoom into about 50% so you can see what this looks like. So now what we need to do is apply this texture to our artwork to make it look like it's actually part of that artwork. And we're gonna do that using blending modes. So with our grain layer selected, we're gonna go up here to where it says normal and just click on that and change it to overlay. And at this point, you could be completely finished with it, but there's a couple more things that I wanna do. First off, our artwork is looking a little bit too clean. We've got these really crisp lines going on here. So I wanna make it look a little bit more natural and organic. So we're gonna click on our vector smart object layer, go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna give it a blur of about two pixels. 
That way it really softens up those edges right there and doesn't make it look too clean. And now we're gonna back off the intensity of the grain layer a little bit by double clicking on the grain layer and we're gonna use Blend If. So let's go to Blend If Gray and we've got our current layer right here. And if you look at these little carrots right here, you can actually separate these two. So on Mac, we're gonna hold down Option and on Windows, we're gonna hold down Alt and just click on that left carrot and bring it down. And the further left we go, you can actually see that intensity is lowering. I'm gonna bring it down to about 100. That's looking good to me. And now we've recreated that poster that we found on Pinterest and it's looking really cool. I hope you enjoyed this design with me session and that I taught you something in Illustrator or Photoshop today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.